What's up, y'all? My name is Trevor Went. I'm a visual artist based out of Raleigh, North Carolina, making art to challenge perspectives and give hope to the marginalized and oppressed. And today I want to teach y'all how I create studio self-portraits. in college I didn't have a car until I was in my second semester of my senior year and so what that meant for me was that most of my projects for photography came from the studio and a lot of times I would take time to decompress and kind of take a break from reality and go shoot self-portraits there and so that's where I kind of learned you know my tricks of the trade with figuring out how to shoot photos of myself there so here are my seven tips for how to shoot studio self-portraits for the gear that you're gonna need and how to set it up, make sure you check out my last video on how to shoot street style self-portraits. That's gonna be linked right here. So check that out after you watch this video. I'll also link the gear below so y'all can check that out too. When we're talking about shooting in the studio, there are a couple of different pieces of gear that are not included with shooting outside, namely lights, stands, a backdrop, and a trigger. I'll talk about my lights in a second, but for stands, I often use C stands as often as possible. I'm using C stands. C stands are not cheap. You know, they can be $150 or more per stand, but it's important to put your gear on a steady, strong stand. Now, I don't think you have to use C stands for your equipment, but make sure you're not getting those like $10 stands from Walmart or Amazon or something like that. You need to get a stand that can hold your gear that you throw a sandbag on to make sure that your gear is protected because the last thing that you want is to watch $500 just crash to the ground. So my trigger, which is the thing that communicates from the camera to the light that it needs to fire, is a Cyber Commander from Paul C. Buff. It was the most affordable option and probably the best value in total when I was looking at upgrading my gear and buying some strobes. In the past, I have used Pocket Wizards, and they are also very dope, but they are a little bit more expensive than just copping the one Cyber Commander and then the tiny little kind of Cyber Sync things that go into the back of the lights. All right, people, first off, you got to determine the vibe. This means you got to figure out the vibe of what you're shooting before you're shooting it. We got the internet nowadays, so hit Pinterest, hit the internet and try to figure out a vibe of what you're shooting before you're shooting and try to get some inspiration from some different spaces. I'll hit up Pinterest, I'll hit up my phone, hit up Visco, hit up Instagram at times, but just figure out what you're shooting before you're shooting it. The next thing you wanna do is determine your lighting setup. So my setup for this shoot included an 89 inch parabolic umbrella with a white diffuser in front of it and then a black cover for the back of it. This basically made this umbrella into an 89 inch softbox, which I was really excited about using as my key light that day, which is your main light. And then I also had a hair light of a strip box to kind of bring my black hair off of the black background that I was using that day. The strobes I use are DigiB 800s. They're from Paul C. Buff and I love them. They are affordable. They work great for me. And I don't use pro photos because pro photos are hella expensive and your boy don't got hella guap and these work great. So I rock with them. When you're shooting in the studio, you want to make sure that you're lighting one light at a time. Don't try to turn on all the fixtures and try to light everything at the same time. Start with one light and then keep progressing from there. Have some sort of marker too. I knew that I was going to be sitting in a stool and so I knew where I could point my light direction at. I knew I wanted the softbox sitting at about a 45 degree angle towards my face, kind of giving me that Rembrandt lighting feel, but also it was big enough where it was going to light a lot of my body. And then also having that hair light just hit right at the back of my head or my shoulders to separate me from the backdrop. Make sure that you are changing up your pose between shots so that you have a variety of images to look at when you go into post-production. But then also, if you're not comfortable or you don't really know how to pose, look up some reference images and just try out some different things that you see from the things that you've determined the vibe from. And then you can try out those different things, see if they work for you and figure out what angles work best for you. Figure out what angles of your body and your face and all those things that you like the most. 
make sure you're checking your images periodically throughout your shoot so that you get a feel for how you're doing any ways that you may need to adjust but then also know you know get some confidence if you're doing super well but this will kind of give you a feel for how your shoot's going and then how it needs to go from there so here are some of my favorite images from this shoot So in my personal opinion, studio self-portraits are way more difficult than outdoor self-portraits, but through time and energy, the grind, through all that effort that you'll put into it, you'll get better. So keep at it, keep grinding. If you like this video, make sure you hit that like button, subscribe to this channel if you haven't, share this video with somebody else who might benefit from it, and make sure you hit that notification bell situation so that you know every single time I drop a new video. And I'll catch y'all on the flip. Be easy, y'all.